Shalom, shalom. Baruch haba b'shem, Yeshua. Blessed is he who comes in the name of Jesus. He is the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the ending, who was and is and is to come. He is the Lord, God Almighty, Yeshua, Jesus, the Messiah. Amen. That's according to Isaiah 9, verse 6, Micah 5, verse 2, Revelations 1, John chapter 1, Colossians chapter 1. They all speak of Yeshua, Jesus, as God Almighty, as God in the flesh. Amen. I believe the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the three, are one. According to John chapter 14 and 1 John 5, verse 7, in the King James Bible. Amen. I believe that the gospel is this, that God was manifested in the flesh. He was born of a virgin about 2,000 years ago. He lived a perfect life. He died for our sins on the cross as a willing sacrifice, as the Lamb of God, uh, the propitiation for our sins so that we can be uh, forgiven and cleansed and reconciled back to the Father. Uh, I believe that anyone who calls on the name of Yeshua or Jesus or uh, whatever name you believe is correct, uh, you will be saved. And But there's also uh, things that you must do also in order to be saved, and that's to repent. Uh, turn away from your sins, confess and forsake them, uh, study the Bible, renew your mind uh, in, using the scriptures, and then follow Christ and his commandments until the very end. And if we hold up to our end of the deal, then Christ will never leave us nor forsake us. Amen. Now, with that said, um, I just wanted to do a study today on the final beast kingdom of the Antichrist, of Satan, uh, which is described in several different instances in the Bible, from Daniel chapter 7 to Revelation 13 to Daniel chapter 2, and so on and so forth. First, I just want to go through a, a brief walk through uh, using these pictures that I put together. Now this is the fourth beast of Daniel chapter 7 and it has ten horns and it's uh, terrible and dreadful and it stamps down all the nations. Okay, And basically I believe this is an extension of the Roman Empire and it, I think it's going to be basically a revised Roman Empire with uh, Pope Francis and probably the United Nations and uh, I think that this fourth beast is the same as the first beast of Revelation 13. Now this is the first beast of Revelation 13 and it has again ten horns which are ten kings it has seven heads Okay, and it has uh, different attributes as well that I'll talk about. But uh, this is basically a representation of Satan's final empire on the earth before Christ returns. Now, the seven heads, according to Revelation 17, uh, it's, it indicates that Rome is the sixth head of this of this beast system and so then if you go back from rome count back five you have greece persia or media persia babylon and then i believe assyria and egypt and then the beast that is to come after rome the extension of this roman empire i think is some sort of you know, global revised Roman Empire with the Pope Francis, with the Antichrist and the Ten Kings, probably including, you know, World Economic Forum and the United Nations and so on and so forth. Okay, 
it is a beast that rises from the sea. The sea represents the multitudes uh, of the people of the nations. Now it says here in Revelation 17, And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but received power as kings one hour with the beast. These have one mind, and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. Okay, so this is telling us that the ten kings, they will reign and rule with the Antichrist, with this new world order system at the same time. So some people say, oh, the ten kings, they are, you know, the last ten U.S. presidents. Well, according to this, uh, these are ten kings that will rule at the same time as this new world order system. Okay, they'll be working together over different regions of the entire world. That's how I understand it. And over the ten kings, there will be one little horn, which is the Antichrist. And this is here in Daniel 7, verse 25. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws. And they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of times. Uh, that's actually three and a half years. Now this final empire i believe according to revelation 13 will have a one world leader okay the antichrist a one world police state one world government system one world religion as well as a mark of the beast system okay probably the cryptocurrency mandatory jabs mandatory uh you know biometric id and, and all this other stuff now this is also sort of represented in daniel chapter 2 as well where it talks about the dream that nebuchadnezzar king of babylon had and daniel was given the interpretation and so basically the head represents uh, you know, Nebuchadnezzar's Babylon. The chest is the media Persian Empire that came afterwards. The belly and the thighs are made of brass. Okay, they are the Grecian Empire. And then after that, you have the legs of iron, which represents Rome. And the feet, okay, with ten toes, ten kings. Okay, that's the empire that we are in, I believe. And that is uh, partly iron and partly clay. Now I believe that represents that it's not completely ruled by a Roman uh, Roman government system. That is not just yet, uh, because the clay I believe represents the kingdom that the kingdom of Christ, uh, you know, making their mark here on the world systems. So you might say that the clay could represent the Christian uh, populations and governments that were, you know, sort of affected by the gospel of Christ, okay, that are sort of opposing or, or uh, weakening the iron uh, strength of the Roman Empire. Now, with that said, Daniel chapter 2 is a, a whole another study, but this also represents the different kingdoms and the feet of iron and clay that's uh, with the ten toes the ten kings okay that's the final new world order system before christ comes down as a stone from heaven which destroys the statue amen so in revelations 12 it talks about a seven-headed dragon okay the seven heads i believe again are being represented as seven kingdoms uh you know that satan has been working through i think that's egypt assyria babylon persia greece rome and then this coming revised roman uh empire okay 
Now let's do a, a walkthrough study here at Daniel chapter 7. It says, In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed. Then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matter. D Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold the four winds of the heaven strove upon the great sea. And four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse one from another. The first was like a lion, and had eagle's wings. I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked, and it was and it was lifted up from the earth, and made to stand upon the feet as a man, and a man's heart was given to it. Okay, now I believe this is a representation of Nebuchadnezzar's Babylon. If you read the book of uh, Daniel, King Nebuchadnezzar, okay, he was made as a wild beast for seven years, and he roamed the earth, okay, and, and uh, ate, uh, ate from the earth until he was given a, a man's heart of understanding after the seven years, and uh, that's when his senses were restored. Okay, that's because Nebuchadnezzar failed to acknowledge the God of heaven, so God made him to be like a wild beast for seven years. Okay, so this is uh, obviously talking about Nebuchadnezzar's Babylon, just like the head of gold in Daniel chapter 2. And in Daniel 7 verse 5, it says, And behold, another beast, a second, like to a bear, and raised up itself on one side. And it had three ribs in the mouth of it between the teeth of it. And they said, Thus unto it arise, devour much flesh. Now I believe this is uh, Media Persia, which is the ruling kingdom that came after it. And, and that's also in Daniel chapter 2. It would be the silver uh, chest and arms of the statue. And then Daniel 7 verse 6, After this I beheld in lo another, like a leopard, which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl. The beast also uh, had four heads, and dominion was given unto it. Now, this leopard, I believe, is the Grecian Empire. Now, we know that Alexander the Great came out of Greece, okay, and, and after Alexander the Great, you had the four kings, which would be the four heads. And uh, those four kings were also talked about in Daniel chapter 8 as represented as the four horns out of the, uh, the goat, okay? So there we know that this third beast, the leopard beast, is the representation of Greece and the four kingdoms that arose out of uh, Alexander the Great. And then it says, After this I saw in the night visions, and behold a fourth beast dreadful and terrible and strong exceeding, and it had great iron teeth, it devoured and break in pieces, and stamped the residue with the feet of it, and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. Okay, so now this is the final beast, the fourth beast, the final empire of Satan. Now again, I believe that Rome uh, is the fourth beast, and it's been more or less in power since uh, since the time of Christ, and, and even before then. Now it says, I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn, before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots, and behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of man, and a mouth speaking great things. Okay, that's basically, you know, the same language as Revelation 13. The one world leader, okay, the Antichrist. And then it says, I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool, his throne his throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. 
a fiery stream issued and came forth from before him, thousand thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him, and the judgment was set, and the books were opened. I beheld then because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake, the Antichrist, I beheld even till the beast was slain, and his body destroyed, and given to the burning flame. Now I think this is uh, basically talking about the same scene that we see in Revelations 19 and 20, where Christ returns, destroys the Antichrist at the Battle of Armageddon, uh, just north of Jerusalem, and uh, then the, according to Revelations 19, the beast, the Antichrist, and the false prophet are cast into the lake of fire, and so that would match up with this where it says the beast was slain and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. Okay, Revelations 19. Just, uh, you know, compare those two instances in scripture and you'll see that's talking about the same scene. Now it says in Daniel 7 verse 12, as concerning the rest of the beasts, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. Okay, so this is, I believe, the Father and the Son. And there was given him, the Son of Man, a dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting kingdom. Okay, just as we read in uh, Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 and 7, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. Okay, now we also know in Psalms chapter 2 that the Son is given a rod of iron uh, to basically rule all the nations. Now, in Daniel 7 verse 15, it says, I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit in the midst of my body, and the visions of my head troubled me. I came near unto one of them that stood by and asked him the truth of all this. So he told me and made me know the interpretation of the things. These great beasts, which are four, are four kings, or kingdoms, which shall arise out of the earth. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess a kingdom forever, even forever and ever. Okay, that's after Christ returns. Then I would know the truth of the fourth beast, which was diverse from all the others, exceeding dreadful, whose teeth were of iron and his nails of brass, which devoured, break in pieces, and stamped the residue with his feet. And the ten horns that were in his head, and the other which came up before him, whom three fell, even of that horn that had eyes, and a mouth that spake very great things, whose look was more stout than his fellows. I beheld the same horn made war with the saints, and prevailed against them. Okay, that's also talked about in Revelation 13. Until the Ancient of Days came, and the judgment was given to the saints of the Most High. And the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. Thus he said, The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon the earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, shall tread it down and break it in pieces. Okay? The whole earth, a one world order. And the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise and another shall rise after them. Okay, that's the little horn, the Antichrist. And he shall be diverse from the first and he shall subdue or take away three kings. And he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High and think to change times and laws. And they shall be given into his hand and until a time, a times, and the dividing of times, three and a half years. But the judgment shall sit, and they shall take away his dominion, to consume and to destroy it unto the end. And the kingdom and the dominion, and the greatness of the kingdom, under the whole 
heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominion shall serve and obey him. Okay, so there we see the four beasts or four kingdoms that rule and reign one after another. Okay, now people like to say, okay, well, the leopard is uh, this this country that's ruling right now the bear is russia and all this other stuff and uh, i just don't see how, how that's possible because these uh kingdoms are talking about uh specific uh time periods uh for instance nebuchadnezzar was the one who uh who was made to roam the earth as a beast for seven years and then was uh given a man's heart okay and literally uh, Nebuchadnezzar uh, began to grow uh, feathers on his skin if I remember correctly okay and then of course we know that the bear would be the media Persian Empire which I believe uh, took down three kingdoms if I remember correctly and then we know that the leopard okay uh, out of that came the four heads which would be the four kingdoms uh, that came out of Alexander the Great now so we know that those are specific time periods so we know that those beasts aren't reigning and ruling uh, at this time yet uh, it's possible that you know in Revelation 13 it's it's an amalgamation of all these beasts uh, it's possible that perhaps that the remnants of these empires uh, could be all joined together in a one world order system but biblically speaking these are kingdoms that were in their time they were the most powerful uh, kingdoms on the earth while they're reigning okay now we know that obviously these kingdoms are not really powerful as they were back then Now, if we look at Revelation 13, it says, this is a revelation given to John the Apostle from Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. It says, and I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. Okay, so here we see the seven heads and the ten horns. Okay, just like Revelations 12 talks about the dragon with seven heads. Okay, seven empires. And that's expanded upon in Revelation 17. And it says, And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. Okay, so the leopard again would be Greece, the Grecian Empire. And his feet were as the feet of the bear. That would be the Media Persian Empire. And his mouth as the mouth of a lion. I guess that would be like Nebuchadnezzar's Babylon perhaps and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority okay so that could just be sort of a nod to Daniel chapter 7 or it could be implying that this is you know an, an amalgamation of the remnants of those you know what's left over from those empires possibly and it says, And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast. Now it's, it's talking about a, a, a head wound. Well, what are the heads? They're kingdoms. Okay, so this could be talking about a restoration of the Roman Empire as a global superpower. And they worshiped the dragon which gave power unto the beast, and they worshiped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things, okay, and blasphemies, just like Daniel 7 talks about. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months, that's three and a half years, just like Daniel 7 talks about. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. 
and was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them and power was given unto him over all kindreds and tongues and nations okay that's a one world leader over all the earth and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him the beast the antichrist whose names are not written in the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world if any man have an ear let him hear amen now if we look at revelation 17 it's talking about the destruction of the harlot okay mystery babylon now i personally think that uh, revelation 17 uh, is a different mystery babylon than revelation 18 i think that revelation 17 is talking about uh the sort of the mystery babylon religion that has been permeating uh these you know various kingdoms of the earth whereas i believe revelations 18 is talking about the destruction of the great empire that is reigning today okay the western superpower known as america now if we go down and look we'll see it says and here's a mind which has wisdom the seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth and there are seven kings five are fallen one is and the others not yet come and when he comes he must continue a short space now it says that five are fallen so it, so it's saying here that the seven kings five of them are already dead <laughs> okay and one is i believe that's talking about the roman empire that is currently in power at the time that john the apostle wrote the book and then it says the others not yet come it's talking about the coming antichrist i believe and when he comes he must reign or must continue a short space well he's only given seven years until christ returns and the beast that was and is not even he is the eighth and is of the seven and goes into perdition and the ten horns which shall sauce are ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet but receive power as kings one hour with the beast these have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast okay these shall make war with the lamb and the lamb shall overcome them for he is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings, and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. And it says, He saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. For as for God has put it in their heart to fulfill his will and to agree and give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of God shall be fulfilled and uh, so that's my uh, my quick study there um, obviously you could probably do a little bit more in-depth study uh, but uh, I definitely think that we are in the time where the ten kings are about to appear the one world order and the antichrist will uh, have power over those ten kings and will have power to persecute and hunt down the left behind christians okay now the book of revelation says that whoever does not worship the beast or his image or receive his mark will be beheaded uh, for their testimony of christ so we know that those who are left behind will be uh, killed for their faith. So Jesus said, watch and pray always that you will be counted worthy to escape what is to come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Luke 21, 36. If you don't know Yeshua Jesus as your Lord and Savior, please confess and forsake your sins and follow him. And I hope to see you all in heaven very soon. And shalom. 
Until next time, amen.